<clears throat> All right, and welcome to another video and live stream, making the game song ringer. Today I'm working on the iOS version. I got things rolling here with the iOS version pretty well, um, but there's a lot left to do, and um, there's a lot of quality of life improvements I can do, and I'm just gonna do that for the next hour or two. It might save me, you know, 10 or 20 seconds every time I every hour or whatever but still dude some of this iOS development is so frustratingly sl slow and there's just some other like improvements I can make like copying the save file from my root folder so I can uh, pretty much you know like edit keep on editing in Vim which is way faster than trying to edit code in Xcode um, so just little things like that to um, make uh, development on iOS smoother um, because it's just like night and day compared to how how easy it is to develop for Mac or even Windows, you know, and Linux and things like that. The desktop versions just boot up so quickly and run quickly, and you can like pretty much instantly you're you're running the game. And with iOS, you got to wait like 10 or 20 seconds just to get it all booted up, even if you have even if you have the simulator already open. So um, anything I can do to try and speed that up will be awesome. So that's what I'm working on. Um, first thing I want to do is try and copy the save file from Songbringer's root file to the save path. Yo, what's up? How's it going, poor Gale? Alessandro. How you doing, man? Yeah, things are great. <clears throat> Sorry, I kind of have a sore throat today, so I'm going to try not to talk as much as I normally do. <clears throat> yeah, man. Just working on the iOS version here. So I got this little bit of code. It's going to be mostly a programming day and kind of like setting things up like that. I got a bit of code here that can copy files. Uh, so this gets the documents directory. Okay, so let me go ahead and start coding this up. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm copying, I'm gonna try and copy the, um, the Songbringer save file from the root folder to the game's simulators save file destination. The tricky part about this is that this every time you freaking run the simulator, or maybe not every time, but like a lot of the times you run the simulator, it's like it changes the folder. Somehow you get these crazy long complicated names for where, like check this out. This is like how long the save path is. It's huge and it changes. I don't know why it changes, but it does. Some iOS wizard out there might know what the heck is up with that. But my solution to this is just to try and copy the save file every time you boot up the iOS version if you're running the simulator. So this code will only run if you're actually running the simulator version. So if you're running this on an iOS device, you know, officially it's not going to ever run this code. Um, so this is just a quality of life type thing. Um, so yeah, let's start copying this code in here. We need this file manager thing. Oh gosh, what am I doing this in Xcode for? Okay, so we need to set up a path for one of the items and, and then paths, text path. Okay, maybe I can just do, okay, like, uh,
in a string pointer from equals n in a string uh, string with I think it's utf8. Gosh, maybe I have to I have to go with part of this in Xcode because I don't remember these commands. It's been so long since I coded any Objective C string with utf. Come on, autocomplete. This is why I switched away from Xcode. Aha, eight, yeah, eight string. Okay, so from is, songbringer saves dot text and two and a string game get save path at seaster okay so if file exists at path two file manager remove we need to end this error Oh, what's the I objective C way of saying error or null pointer? Nil, that's right. Nil. Same thing. Same thing as null. Okay, so we've got that part. Let's see if this can, is going to even work. And then file manager copy item 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 at path from to path to and then we'll put a little bit of this so we can set a breakpoint there don't need that anymore keep this breakpoint here and let's see what happens um, I have this fear. I think that it probably won't work because iOS is a super restrictive platform, so it probably won't allow me to copy a file from my hard drive on, into this self-contained iOS simulator path. It's probably not going to allow this. So I imagine this is probably going to produce an error, but it's worth a shot. Um, my backup plan is to copy the saves.txt in the bundle resources and then widget it around, move it around if, if necessary. Why did it just move the breakpoint? Put the breakpoint back there, yo. All right. Errors nil? Oh wow. It might have worked. Oh my god. Okay, let's let's try that out. Um we already got our save path. Let's see if it's uh if that file. Yeah, it worked. Oh my god. Hell yes. Okay, so let's um, allow this to continue and see if now we have all the save information that we would have had. Oh, we don't need this breakpoint. Whatever that was. Are you seeing what I mean about how slow it is? Good God. It's like 10 times slower because I'm streaming, but uh, 
Okay, let's see what we got. I should have my items and all that. I got the sword. Oh, it doesn't look like it worked. Maybe it loaded the saves file first. Yeah, this is the old saves file. But, what if I run it again? Because it, it might have it might have loaded my save file right there. So if I run it again. This works. Get rid of that break point. Oh look, I have the shirt, yeah. Looks like I might have my items. Sweet, I got some bombs. Yeah, right on. Okay, that I think it worked. So it looks like I need to copy that. Yeah, I got all the items here. Okay, so I need to copy the items before, or the saves file, before it actually runs this. Before it actually creates the static game. Um, and it'd be nice to put this in its own function. Let's go ahead and do that to start with. So let's make this a member. Uh, do I have to type void? Yeah, I do. Okay, so, and then you type out this, like, <laughs> I'm remembering Objective C here. Um, so we'll call this one Backup, or no, Restore Saves. Or no, wait, we should call this Copy Path. This is only if... We are OS simulator, so copy path. Um, let's copy from a UTF-8 path. Oh gosh, I forget how you do multiple arguments. Oh man. It's been a long time. No, it's it's like two LLL. How do you do the second argument? That's the second argument, yeah. Uh, uh, 
Oh yeah. Okay, so we'll go copy path from to I think you just repeat it. There we go. Okay, so let's do let's call this from Seaster to Seaster. From Seaster to Seaster. And then we want to copy this before we create the game. Uh, and then we would basically call something like self copy path from songbringer saves.txt to, and this is where we got to get the save path, but the save path is a little messed up because we haven't loaded yet. So I guess we could create a function called set save path. It's private to the game here. Let's move this save path setting code in here. Call set save path here. And this I got this other thing where you get the save path. We have save path dot empty set save path. So there we got um, okay that, now we need one more thing. to game get save path Seaster. This might error out because I was just typing that. And let's make sure that it runs this. And it runs it all successfully. So I'm going to set a breakpoint there when it's calling its own copy path from thing.
Okay, good. We're getting the breakpoint. Let's step in. Game. All right. Do we have a save path yet? We should not. Save path is empty, so it's going to set the save path. return it. Now it's going to go into this copy. All right, good. I'm glad I can create a method sort of privately like this. I totally forgot how to do any Objective-C code, so this is pretty good to have a convenient method here to be able to copy a path. Cool, so we can copy the file manager, do the from, the to, remove the old one, copy it over, make sure there's no error, good. All right, great, let's get this organized now. Whew, nice. Cool, so now that I have this method, I can um, call this when the game closes to copy the save file back. So if things change, Um, any changes that are made to the saves file can be copied back to Songbringer's saves.txt. Um, before I do anything else, I'm going to copy my current saves. Let me just back that up real quick. Um, and then, so when we are about to resign active, um, we are going to go game. Basically save the game. Hold on, why isn't that returning a thing? We don't, do we want to save our current position and hit points? No, oh no, we just want to go game, save game. and flush. Yeah, we only set hit points and position when we like enter a dungeon and stuff like that. So game, save game, and then self copy path from There, now if that works. hope this works. I can set an assertion failure. I guess we could check if the assertion failure worked. By just um, setting this to not equals, right? So that should log a failure. I'm not sure if assert even works on iOS. I mean, this is a good thing to get working. We should be able to assert.
and we might as well not waste the string. So basically by calling string with UTF-8 string, um, we are not exactly leaking memory, but not managing our own memory. And after this is all said and done, release the memory. Okay, so I've got it, so it's, it should fail. Let's run that one more time. Let's set a breakpoint, like, there. Boy, it's Grog. What's up, man? What up? I can't see what I'm typing you here. <laughs> Almost got it. I'm streaming today with low latency, so the chat might be faster. I don't know. From to... This looks like it set up these strings correctly. And I think calling from release... Yeah, that seemed to work. To release, error is nil, so this should fail. What's going to happen here if we f if we do an assertion failure? It logs, and then it calls kit exit. Okay, so what is kit exit? does nothing. There's really no way to exit on iOS. So what is going to happen here? We're going to get out of this assertion method. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, how do you do an assertion failure on iOS again? These are basic things, basic things. Let's figure this out. Assertion failures. How the heck do you do this again? You just call assert? Show me, show me the not swift version. How do you, oh. how do you turn off swift? See also, uh,
Hmm. Maybe the function is just called assert. So I've got kits assert. Maybe, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should just open up the kits exit method. LFK is mobile. Assert false. No exit method on iOS. Give that a shot. Yo, it'd be so nice if I didn't have to sign the product every time. Yeah, is it possible to not sign your iOS app? Can you run an unsigned iOS app in the simulator? Okay, so maybe you can't I guess you can do that. Oh, isn't it NS assert? Oh, maybe it's NS assert. That seems to be working. What just happened? Did it run? Oh. Oh yeah, it, it did this failure. Okay, let's see that again. Launching. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, I guess I do want that breakpoint there. And then run it and signals an abort. I guess that's the right way to do it. I mean what if I were to run keep on running you can't keep on running this because it sig aborted. Okay, that's uh, that's good enough. And I mean, essentially, that should be returned there. Nah, I mean, shoot, it doesn't really matter.
Okay, gosh, this is like coming along here. All right, let's see what happens when we try and shut the app down now. Um, I guess these are good to go, and we can say assert equals nil. And oh, we want to have our assertion failure in and working like that. Okay, so we should be good to go now. Okay, so we have, um, we should be able to tell if this works because what? Um, let's start the player somewhere else. Um, here's our saves. Start the player there. That'll work, it's fine. 228. Okay, should work. And then we want to hit this breakpoint when we're done. God, so far this is, um, this is great. Some real quality of life improvements already. I just gotta remember to click the home button on the iOS simulator because that's the only way to trigger this whole application will resign active. You can't just click the stop button up there in Xcode. That actually just halts the debugger without allowing the code to continue running. So you're not the only way to the only way to run any code as it's shutting down is to actually click that home button. It's pretty convenient with the Mac version and the Windows version and all that. Basically, if you hit Command Q or you use the keyboard shortcut to close your app, there's actually you can run code as it's closing down. But it's a bit different when you try and when you just click that big old stop button there up in Xcode. Yeah, good. So we've got it here. We're in the right place. Look at all these items and stuff. And now I'm just going to click the home button. Good. We're getting this. We apparently we saved the game already. Um, let's check that out. Let's check out this save game file. See if it's any different. Here we are. It's got our wizard stuff. Um, it should have added settings dash iOS. That's how we could tell that it's different. Yeah, nice. Settings iOS, there we go. Nice. Okay, let's close this now. We should only have log and saves. So let's allow that to run. And let's check our Yeah, nice. Our saves.txt got this settings.ios in here. Sweet. No, so let's organize this a bit. Let's put this back in our settings sections. Let's put that after there. And let's do this now. Let's say we want to be able to set any pause. This is a debug command that allows um, um, me to put the player anywhere. So like that, like nine is something that you it wouldn't allow in the game because nine is just a Z level and it's like, you can't just put the player at nine. But in debug mode, if you have any pause, then sure. It's like, oh, okay, I'll put you at the start of dungeon nine because it's like a debug-ish thing. So we got the setup now. So we're gonna try it. 
Um, and oh, let's, when we're done, Let's do let's copy the log dot text too. Which does it have? Oops. Let's see if that file actually exists. Oh no, it's not there. Log. Okay. Um. jump into this directory Let's see where it's putting the log.txt if anywhere oh it's what maybe it doesn't write it try that again no oh what No, it doesn't it's maybe it's not writing it at all. Cause this is the next piece of the puzzle. If I can copy the log.txt back over, it's gonna be super convenient to be able to check that out from the command line rather than having to jump into Xcode's console. Okay, so we got to figure out how to get it to have a log.txt. Let's let's actually check in so far. This, this is really great code so far. Everything seems to be working. Oh, I guess I should test this one last thing, right? I was doing um Yeah, I had P9 and any pause. Okay. So I can run this again and it should allow me to be at dungeon nine, which is the tower. And uh, that's it. Nice, we're here at the tower. Boom, that's super cool. I get this home button there. It should say something here like, um, Game now inactive. Game now. 
active game entered background game entered foreground game will terminate that looks good Get that in there too. So now we should be able to see some stuff output into the log whenever it's like doing these standard uh, callbacks from the system from iOS. Game now active. Cool. Flux open done. Pull out the sword. That's cool. Okay. Hit the home button. Game now inactive. Game entered background. I wonder if we can somehow to get it to terminate. If we open up another app, maybe. No, I guess not. That's fine. If we hit that stop button, it's going to pretty much close the code and so you can't, nothing else happens. Okay, this is a great start. Let's get this checked in. We're including target conditionals, so we've got this target OS simulator. It's a nice little trick to be able to detect if you're building for the simulator. And so basically all this code right here doesn't even compile for uh, iOS's release mode. So we, now we got a nice function that copies files from somewhere on my system to somewhere on the virtual simulator system. So it copies the saves.txt when it starts up and then it copies it again when it's shutting down if you shut it down nicely and we got some nice log statements showing when it's going into those different foreground background modes um, we've got a function that sets the save path gets the save path and then in kits exit function it asserts false because it can't exit which it's a good way to do it because it's sigaborts, which is kind of like the same dang thing as you would want to do. There's really no way to close an, an iOS app. You can crash it on purpose, but it's not really the right way to do it. So let's check this in. Modified app controller, game, and kit. Um, this is uh, copy systems saves dot text to simulator before running and after whatever okay so the next things the log dot text copying that over would be sweet but can we do this?
It looks like we can generate an IPA file, but it's not, that might be defeating the purpose of trying, you know, the whole point here is to try and build faster, you know, and I, I'm noticing here that it's taking like an extra three to five seconds every time it has to sign the iOS app. But creating an IPA is probably just going to take even longer. And who knows whether we could actually get it. Well, time for me to take a quick break. This is something I've been doing lately is getting up every half an hour to an hour and doing a few quick exercises. Oh, keep my body from falling apart. As, as one gets older, it's important to not fall apart. So I got this little app on my phone that it's called Intervals. And it basically allows me to press a button and it Every every 20 seconds, it change it tells me to change exercises. So I'm gonna do a few exercises here for about two and a half minutes. Mobilize. Five seconds until recover. Recover. Five seconds until mobilize. Mobilize. Five seconds until recover. Recover. Five seconds until mobilize. Mobilize. Five seconds until recover. Recover. Five seconds until mobilize. Mobilize. Ugh. Five seconds until recover. Recover. Five seconds until mobilize. Mobilize. Five seconds until recover. Recover. Five seconds. Workout complete. All right, back to it. Okay, maybe this is possible. Let's read through this here. You're actually changing the iPhone. I wonder if you can change like just the iPhone simulator SDK so it does not require signing.
Oh, is this exactly the thing I would know? Huh. Okay, I'm gonna I hope this can work for for the simulator only. Let's check it out. Nice, we got the iPhone simulator platform. What was that again? Developer SDKs, SDK settings. Code signing required? No. God, I hope this works. Let's make a backup copy of that. I should have just freaking done this from the command line. Okay, let's copy that back in. All right. Okay, so apparently we need to restart Xcode. We might need to restart the simulator. Man, I hope this works. That'd be sweet.
code time again. Oh, there we go. Any simulator, don't code sign, otherwise developer. Boom. Oh, one more thing. Let's do that same thing for uh, any iOS simulator in release mode, also don't code sign. So if we're building it, it's, we're gonna have to probably rebuild the whole project here, but it's fine. Oh, also while I'm here, let's make sure it's only building the one architecture. No, nah, see, it's, I think it's building a lot of architectures here. Let's set this up, too. Debug. Oh, shoot. Debug doesn't even need to change. Hold on. Debug can just be... ARM64. right just to build that oh and that can be it uh, like this can be set here architectures There, so we're not going to build like, hopefully we're not going to build all the architectures. I don't know if that's working. It seems just as slow. Hmm, maybe we shouldn't do 64. Or maybe this needs to be x86. Hold on, let's try this. Let's try this again. Um, debug for any iOS simulator.
Okay, hopefully that is a little quicker this time. Actually slower. It's gonna be slower. Hmm. Nah, but it's, it's worth the time to try and you know do this a little bit because I'm telling you, like saving yourself 30 seconds here and there really adds up especially when you're sitting here twiddling your thumbs tapping your fingers on your desktop going oh, I wish this was built already I'm trying to make iOS development faster any anything faster five seconds faster it's fine Give me a, give me, I'll take anything. This definitely seems to be building slower. I set it to build only ARM v7, but it's like, maybe, that, maybe it's not supposed to be ARM v7, maybe it's supposed to be x86. or i386, I'm not sure which one Xcode uses. Oh man, this is like twice as slow. Either that or it's the first time I've rebuilt the whole project here while live streaming. And it's just the fact that the game show streaming software is eating up so much that it's making this compile take like five minutes long. I guess I'll have to do this test after the stream. Let's see what happens though with the code signing. Hopefully it doesn't have to code sign. That's a big step. Hmm. Come on.
Yeah. <laughs> okay, I mess it up. Damn it. Oh, it's still signing? None of that worked. Okay, so the architecture is I-386. Son of a bitch. Let's do that again. Oh, wait. Oh, oh. No? Is it? Still not liking it. Okay, I guess I, I don't know how to mess with this right now. I'm just like failing here. Let's get rid of that then. I didn't, why did it still sign? Oh, wait a minute. What if the default needs to be don't code sign? but then override that with any iOS do code sign. And let's just get rid of, let's get rid of this one. Hmm, doesn't look like it had to start over somehow. Yeah, somehow it seems to be compiling faster. When I've set it to like build ARM v7, it just somehow really slowed everything down. Or wait, did I change it to i386 or did I just delete it all together? Oh yeah, it's just Arch's standard now. Okay. Seems to make more sense. Okay. Yeah, I definitely think it's compiling faster this time. It's a little swifter. Well, hopefully this signing thing works this time because I'm tired of trying to just rebuild the project for more speed. Um, the next thing to do would be to kind of like set up the log. That would be in the, I think this thing's log function. Yeah. Oh, see, there's the problem. Boop.
Okay, don't sign. Don't sign. Don't sign. You don't need to sign. Just run it in the simulator without signing. Do it. Okay. Signing product again? Why? Ah, uh, whatever. I'm gonna have to do this after the stream because this is just so slow. All the streaming software is running, but what? What did it actually do here? See, it code signed. Why do you have to code sign? Well, the last 10 minutes of this have gotten me nowhere. Maybe this is all a plot for Apple to just make me buy a faster computer. It's probably what it is. <laughs> Good God. Seriously, why is it taking so long? Like everything has slowed itself down by a factor of five. Oh my god, whatever. Okay, let's just close this. I don't know what's going on. But. Oh, uh, maybe you gotta like disable code signing some other way. I'm loath to try something like that. Like might have to do code signing style manual for that. But I'm trying that after the stream. I can't I can't waste another 10 minutes doing something like that. Okay, so let's make this so it can open the log, write to the log and all that. Um,
So we'll want a break point here. And that's the log open. Here's the log close. Here's the actual log function. And those should be enough. Well, let's hope. Okay, so we want a breakpoint there. And here. And let's hope that we have a log working now. Let's set this up so it's just, there's nothing else we have to do actually, okay. Is, it, is there something in my system going crazy? What is up? Is this why the CP, is this why everything is taking forever? Oh, MBS worker. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, let's run it. Okay, we're in log open. Being called from setup paths. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Why didn't it break on that first line? Whatever, the log file is not open. What's this log file name gonna be? Just log.txt. Oh, because the game root. So does that work? So we just opened up the file. Um, just log.txt. Let's see what happens. Okay, the log file is not open. It couldn't open up that file. It's like, what are you talking about? I can't just open up log.txt. <clears throat> okay, shoot, this is going to require a recompile. Oh. Whatever. Game.h. We need a function called get log path.
Man, let's get that compiling. All right, while that's compiling, let's write it. So we've got a static string save path and a static string log path. When it's um this is supposed to oops. What the? Okay. Log path, writable path, game root. Log name. Here we set the save path and the log path. Okay, now in kit, we want to get the log path. Open it like that. Okay, now we got Let's make this way easier to understand. Separate out those two predicates. When we actually log, we check if it's desktop. It has to be desktop or mobile and the log file has to be open. Okay, let's see if it's done compiling. Oh, almost. Good God, I wrote all that code before it even finished compiling. 
God, this is painful, painfully slow, man. It's not quite this slow when I'm not streaming. Like if I'm just coding normally, it's not so bad. It still will take 60 seconds to recompile though. More, two minutes maybe. Okay. Oh, let's make sure the breakpoints are still in the same places. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can effectively have a freaking log.txt. It's log. It's log. It's big. It's happy. It's wood. Is that how it goes? It's better than bad, it's good. All right, log file name set to this giant long string plus log.txt, that looks good. Now we're trying to add this log. And it's open this time, boom, okay. We run a little bit. Oh, cool. This time it's not outputting everything to the console. Okay, I'm gonna hit this. Stop. Okay, I mean, there's no closing of the log file happening there, but should be okay. Oh, it didn't tell us where the save file is though. Shoot, well, Okay, we're gonna have to rely on this, um, let's copy it back where it's supposed to go. So we don't need to copy it when we start. Well, we do need to copy it back to the system here. So we need to take the log path and copy it back to Songbringer's log.txt. And run again. And we can pretty much turn off all these breakpoints. Okay, so we're no longer getting an output to the log because or this console because the console um actually that's a, that slows things down anyways, too. This might run faster without the logging to the console. Believe it or not, the last iOS project I did, I timed it one time, and just writing to the console takes a good, gosh, on my older computer, it took like 100 milliseconds or something crazy long. I imagine on a modern computer, it would probably at least take 10 milliseconds, though, and writing straight to the files takes something like zero milliseconds or one millisecond, if, you know. So if you're writing a lot to the log.txt, or if you're writing a lot to your console, it can really slow things down. Okay, so we've opened things up. Let's close things down. And that should have copied to the log.txt and I've got that open right here. Yeah, Songbringer, iOS version.
It's even got our save path. Yes. So the only thing is, I have to friggin' remember, whenever I'm running it, here, let's close that too. I mean, it's not gonna change anything, okay. Oh, probably would be better to do that after. After we go, game is now inactive. Let's throw those up at the top then. Right, so at least we'll get game now inactive. Yes, I mean this is super awesome. Oh my god, I mean it's, I can I can debug so much better now that I can see this log dot text right here. Gosh, I wonder if I could actually do Xcode build. From the command line. I can Xcode build the iOS project. That would be another step in the, the right direction. Although maybe something I don't need to quite do just yet. But I bet it's possible. I bet you, I think you can run Xcode build. Well, this is good enough. Let's check this in so far. We got the log. That's awesome. Yes. So sweet. This is just so awesome right here. I wish there was a way I could exit out of the iOS app cleanly if you hit the stop button, but I don't think there really is. Oh, well. Okay, before I check this in, I'm loath to do this, but <laughs> I need to. Um, I need to check the Mac version. I'm I'm just loath to close the simulator. Oh, let's skip that. That needs to recompile for sure. Look how fast that is. So let's touch source so it rebuilds here. So basically what happens here is I got this script set up, a hammer spoon script that if it detects that the simulator is open and I hit my normal command R or command B, command B is my build, command R is to run. Um, if it detects that the simulator is open, it instead of compiling here in Vim on the command line, it goes and um, compiles uh, in, in the Xcode. So basically I just closed the simulator so that it, I can rebuild the Mac version and test it because I want to make sure the log still works and the save still works from um, in the Mac version. Because I did just change the log path for the entire game. But it shouldn't have changed, it shouldn't have actually affected anything. So let's confirm that. So source kit, look how much faster it builds on the command line versus in Xcode. Is it faster? 
I don't know. I'm starting to think that it would be super sweet actually to rebuild to build iOS version from the command line as well. I think that's the next step I'm going to take. Besides getting it to code sign or not code sign. But yeah, I think you can run Xcode build on the iOS project and still launch the simulator somehow from the command line. That will save some time as well. Then I won't even have to have Xcode open. I will just have to launch the simulator and then uh, my script will detect that the simulator is open and it will just build the iOS version. Okay, so I did do something wrong there. Uh oh, game.cpp log path. All right. Just need to make sure it sets the log path before it runs that. Let's quit out of here. All right, so now we should be in the log.txt. It should have a game exiting cleanly, and it should be the Steam Mac OS version. Boom. Cool. That worked. Um, let's change up uh, where the player's at and just run again and make sure that this got rid of that warning. Sweet, it changed my player, and still that, and this should say creating area 228, nice. Okay, good. The last thing I'll need to do is check the release version, but I think it should be all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and check this in. And that's gonna be it for today's stream. I kinda need to shut the stream off so I can continue my efforts towards a faster build because it's hard to tell how fast the build is with game show running in the background eating up 100% of one of the two CPUs so let me just verify this is uh, this is all good basically the iOS version now copies back the log path to the system whenever um, whenever it's about to resign active which means you just press the home button Okay. Um, I'm not going to check in this code signing identity just yet because I haven't got that to work. I fixed the root there. That would have been a, a compile error. Set log path. If it's mobile, it uses the kit, the writable path. Otherwise, use the game root. Same as the save path. Add in the log name. There goes my alarm. Just good timing. Set log path. We know we got the get log path too. This is um, k log name, k save name. That looks gonna be. That should be all right. Yep, and we've got, we can export the log path too. That's a good thing actually to be able to do that. Okay, so now log open if it's not desktop and it's not mobile. So it allows, basically it's allowing mobile now. And this is using a more proven like get log path, which kind of works for both mobile and desktop. And then log close, it can close if it's desktop or mobile. And then the same thing with the log statement, I made this 
mirror the log open and close methods where it checks for desktop or mobile and then it also checks to see if the log is open so instead of this sort of confusing statement it's broken down into two separate statements so let's uh, check all that in we go cool so if you're following along this stream or you're watching this on YouTube my goal today was just for some quality of life improvements if I can get my build a little faster in iOS or things like getting the log.txt all linked up and the saves.txt linked up both those things actually worked I'm so surprised that's amazing like to, I'm, I'm one step closer to being able to um, do everything from the command line again, which is always just a little bit faster. Um, so that's awesome. So yeah, I'm happy with my results today, actually, um, because iOS can be painfully slow, and just even even the tiniest little bit of speed improvements will make the rest of this whole time developing this iOS version that much smoother and easier. So thanks for watching this video. Appreciate you. My name is Wizard Foo or Nathaniel. We, uh, yeah. In case you wanted to know my name. So thanks again for watching. Cheers, everybody.